So, the big question is this. How are entrepreneurs and real estate investors like us, ones who want to grow our businesses and who are tired of paying for really expensive alternative lending, how do we tap into the most inexpensive money available and do it without the hassle of typical borrowing? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. I'm Merrill Chandler, and welcome to the Are You Effable podcast. Welcome back, everybody. Merrill Chandler here, your host of Are You Effable? And uh, as you can tell, I've got my partner in crime and in business, Brad Burnett, here with me. We're going to have a, a, an amazing discussion on hacking, right? Hacking, both in the context of funding hackers, as well as white hat, black hat, etc. So do not miss this episode. We'll see you in just a second. Welcome back, everybody. Merrill Chandler here. Are you effable? That's the question we always ask, but we haven't actually addressed the notion of what it, what is funding hacking? We, we have it plastered everywhere, right? We have everything that is associated with being a funding hacker. And some people think that that's a negative thing. Other people are like, yes, I want to hack funding. Brad, what is, fun, where, where does funding hack, hacking come from? And Good thing, bad thing, what is it? Yeah, yeah. so I think it's a great thing <laughs> because we came up with funding hacking from the, the premise that we are constantly at the, the sharp end of the spear when it comes to what's happening with technology, what's happening in, in the financial industry for borrowers. I, mean, I, I don't really care about all the risk analytics and all that stuff as, as it pertains to banks other than how it translates to borrowers. To borrowers and And, and we're, we're hacking these systems because banks don't want to let us, they don't want to let this information out. They don't want to tell people what their risk analytics are. They, they, they believe that if we know them, we'll game them. Right. And so for us, fund hacking, funding hacking, being a funding hacker is absolutely the, the pinnacle of playing at the top of the game by their rules. By the rules that they establish, right? So, so uh, uh, I, doctor, I concur, right? <laughs> the, the, whole, the whole point of, okay, so there's, there's the terms that are out there are white hat, uh, the white hat hacking, you know, the, the, the hero in the black and white, uh, uh, mo uh, the original movies back in the day, there's black hat. Um, and so there's- Like they did with the elections allegedly, <laughs> yeah. that would be bad. Yeah, black hat <laughs> hacking, right? So this is, what we're talking about is definitely white hat hacking it is that uh, we d we say that a uh, funding hacking hacking the funding the game is the exact same thing as having access to the insider secrets that individuals do not know because we're not taught and one of the things one of my gripes one of my rants uh, for this episode is that when i was back at fico um, uh, fico world 19 one of the things that that, that came up is when we would talk to VPs of scores and, and, and even the risk analytics guys, right? <clears throat> and we would say, hey, we optimize borrowers. We optimize the borrowing experience just like you optimize the lending experience. And they're like, and it is though, it is a brand new concept. Like they have never heard these words. They're like, what do you do? And we're like, we optimize borrowers so they can become better borrowers. And like, that's a great idea. I'm like, <laughs> right? <laughs> wow, that's weird. And then we talk to, but yet, just as you were saying, lenders think we're going to game the system if we know that if we know what they're measuring. But you can't, you can't cheat true behavior. If you we tell you that there's a reporting date and that you get better points by paying on the on the day before the reporting date, they get more of their money back on the payment cycle, right? You can't hack this stuff. And, and yet funding hackers is that fun life hack way of saying, you know what, um, uh, just like our private Facebook page for people who go to the boot camp, you have access to the funding hackers, uh, tribe because we, whether it's a rally cry or not get fundable is our objective, but we are committed to it being a community of people who are, who are willing to put on their white hats and share with their friends, their family. They've read my book. They've listened to these podcasts, right? They're all about creating a, 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 an awareness that says, 
we, we don't have to be in the dark. Well, and, and, and to that, one of the things, like, let, let's point out what are some of the funding hacks? What, what makes somebody who's listening to this a funding hacker? It's access, right? You, you mentioned that it's something that nobody's teaching. We're the, we are, and, and you are the only voice <laughs> teaching this. So for some people, this podcast is their funding hack. Yes, right? great point. Because it, it's not that the VPs are going, oh my gosh, that is a brilliant what a great idea. idea. <laughs> We've never once thought of that. And it's not that, that they're not on board with it. They love it as an idea. You should bring us more fundable people. They, yeah, they, they wish all, that would happen. That, that's what they want. They're like, how do you, yeah, if the result is more fundable borrowers, then yes, we're all in. And so, so then the next hack of this experience and, and why is, is Merrill the lead funding hacker? Why is he the, 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 the 10 the, gallon white who, hat? Who do you call yourself coming off the <laughs> mountain? Oh, yeah, Moses, coming Moses. To, Moses with the tablets or, so, uh, or, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, coming, Muhammad it, yeah, coming yeah. down from the mountain. Now also Neo, because that's his matrix matrix reference. If you guys are into that, it's fantastic. <laughs> Apparently we're on the blue pill version of this, this podcast, but but the reason Merrill becomes like the, 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 the champion, if, if you will, of what, what would be considered getting fundable, right, in the Funding Hackers tribe is because he is who gives you access. Him yeah. going to FICO World, it, we're not doing anything nefarious, right? We go to, to there because we're invited. <laughs> and shake the hand and, of the CEO and say, How, how's it going, well, And right? you just did a podcast with uh, – David, David Smith, right? David Smith from <laughs> Guys, Liquid Credit. They know us, right? <laughs> they know Merrill. They approve of his message, right? They approve of what he's doing for borrowers, but his access is the hack. And that's what we're talking about when yeah. we say funding hackers. And there is nothing about that that games the system. No. Will we push boundaries? No. Absolutely. To the degree that Merrill has a, a FICO badge that says demigod, <laughs> right? Like we will push those boundaries. Yeah. Right, we'll push every boundary, but but we'll push them by asking the right questions. Yeah, more and more intelligent. Like you, like you taught me ages ago. The more intelligent the question, the more intelligent the answer can be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your questions. Uh, excellent. So so we go back every year and or uh, to every FICO world, and now that we have we we upgraded from a liaison to a solutions ambassador. <laughs> The hell! What? I didn't even know there were grades <laughs> grades of this. But the whole but the whole point is is that there are questions we have asked. Brad was at, at 2016. He he was there as well, and uh, FICO World 2016. And there are questions to say, yeah, that butts up against IP. So many of my questions now are IP notwithstanding. What can you tell me up to the IP second about this? And they will literally skirt that edge, right? They'll say, "What I can tell you is," and give us a date or time or balances or whatever the the, the essence of the question is, right? So, so the funding hacker and and, uh, and our community is people who are devoted to pushing that all envelope. I may be two or three steps ahead of you pushing the envelope. Well, I, I, I use the, the, the kind of hacking through the jungle with your machete, right? It isn't, it isn't an easy hike behind me, but at least somebody's clearing out some of the, uh, you know, some of the jungle. So what, what we're doing in this episode is kind of how you can relate to being a funding hacker. Because as you said, just listening to the podcast may be your push on this technology and, and, and improving your fundability by listening to, to some of these things, right? Yeah, well, absolutely. And it, and it, it actually brings up a, a quote that, that I, have, I have seen more than once that um, has been used in other, other settings. There's other companies that, that push this. It came from the CEO of Apple, uh, of Apple right? From, yeah. from Steve One Jobs. Night. After Neo, Steve Jobs. Right. right? <laughs> which, which for me was when we, were, when we were starting to have this conversation, I immediately knew that we had to, we had to share this. So do you want me to read it? Yeah, you want please. To read it? Yeah. So, so it, it's, a, it's a... This is our credo, guys. This is what, if you're a funding hacker, it's you are part of this message. Yeah, see, see what of this you relate to. Because for me, I relate to a lot of it. And I know Merrill relates to, to dang near every word. Every so word. so it's, it's the quote by Steve Jobs from 1997 that says, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. You can quote them. 
disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. But the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Yeah. Now, if you're listening to that and you got chills on the back of your neck uh, like I do. I got them on the back of my neck. That, that's, that's who we are. That's who we are. That's, that's who, who Merrill is. That's who you are. And we welcome you to this tribe because we're going to push those boundaries. We're going to ask the questions to say, now, okay, it's always been that way, but does it have to be that way? Right. And does anybody lose, really, really lose if it's different? right? Because everybody in this circle, the credit bureaus, the lenders, FICO even, right? They shore up against their, uh, the IP borrowers. Everybody think, thinks that they're going to lose if something changes. And what we're here to do, what my, my manifesto is, I, I, wish, I wish I were that smart in 97, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, our manifesto is that Things don't have to be the way they are right now. We continue to evolve. And there's two concepts that we've discussed in previous episodes. Guys, go back. It, not, not two weeks ago, did or 10 episodes, did I quote this, that there is evolution and there is revolution. And there is a time for each one of those. Evolution is like line on line, step by step. We slowly grow. And other times, we pull the rug out from underneath. One example at, at FICO World, it was, uh, it was hilarious. I'm talking to a, a two gentlemen. One is from FICO and one was a lender. And I don't even remember the, what the lender was. It, it wasn't even in the United States. And, and we talked, what do you guys do? We're waiting in meetings to start meeting with uh, David for his podcast interview. And he goes, what do you do? And I optimize borrowers. And again, the jaw drops and, every, and everything kind of goes like that blank look on your face, like what? And I asked, so I asked this lender, what is your borrower education strategy? <laughs> and he goes, we don't have one. And I said, we're your borrower education strategy and got his card, which is sitting on my workstation. There you go. We are the borrower. I talked to the vice president of Equifax in the big Equi Equifax booth. I said, what's your borrower education strategy? And he said that there is this, I'm just going to use my language. I Forgive me if you're watching. There's, he, he, he described it like a crazy old coot in Equifax, higher echelon, been there for decades. And he's like the lone voice in the wilderness saying, educate the borrowers educate the borrowers and but since he's inside of equifax there's no credibility of what might be told especially because we had the conversation and go back to our um go back to our previous episode where we talk about um the equifax data breach and how it's not as bad as everybody they, they've shored up all the uh, all of the the risk so that Having your identity stolen is not the thing everybody's sold, right? That it's mm -hmm. not devastating. And when I told the Equifax VP, he's like, I need to put you in touch with this guy. <laughs> there may be some things that he wants to uh, voice through you. And it sounds like you guys are on the same page because this guy was ranting inside of the halls of Equifax, not to be heard by any, anybody on the outside. You guys know it's not that bad. Right. Yeah. But you can't say that to the public. Nope. You can't. And I'm telling you, <clears throat> go listen to that uh, episode. I wish we don't have episode n numbers, so I can't even, I, I can't even. I mean, technically <laughs> we do, but <laughs> they're not listed for your, we don't, we don't have the a list of them in front of us on a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but we go through an entire Equifax, um, why it's, why it's horrible but not as bad as we've been led to believe, right? And, and I do address that. So, the, but the point was, is that borrower, and then I talked in, the, in my conversation this time with a borrower about, uh, with Will Lansing. I go, so. Who, which again, if you, if sorry. first time you're hearing his name, Will Lansing is the CEO of FICO. And this is now the second time that I've met with him. And he remembered credit sense and borrower education and borrower optimization, right? And, 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 bracket it is the funniest thing to watch these guys if i if i talk the tech they're like 
they're all, you know, like optimization, right? And, and, and funding risk analytics. And what, but if I just say something like making borrowers better borrowers, they're like, maybe their eyes gla glaze yeah, over, right? They're it's like, like uh, this, I don't this understand. This neophyte doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what they're saying. Anyway, end bracket. So, uh, Will, uh, Lansing, I said, so what is your, you know, borrower education model? For all of this and and he goes the fico credit boards and i'm like now you realize there's not a single fico employee especially a there's not a single fico employee who is on the credit boards and he goes yes but we monitor the boards this and the other and he said you know that there are horrible mistruths that are talked about by all the various types of people not all of it but many and, and he goes, I would love for you to send those to me. <laughs> and so what we're doing, this is a case I go back to, this is a case of evolution. We may, it may be three or four or five FICO worlds, but we're making inroads in them being able to trust that we have the lenders back because we want to play by the rules. Just like you said a moment ago, we want to, uh, we want to create an intelligent body of borrowers that are extremely fundable pass all the underwriting metrics right but i am committed on your part for our part i am committed to creating this this borrower education process so that lenders have nothing to fear fico has nothing to fear and we might even be a voice for that they can't be the voice for but they never counter us or never argue us or never make us pariah in the, because right. we are that passive the third party that <laughs> validates um you know that 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 what we're saying is not not true they right. would never say oh that's true but they may say you know that's not entirely inaccurate <laughs> right well and 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 to to put a punctuation on that like we we are so committed to this because because we do believe we can make a change. And the, the story you just told with Will Lansing and, and speaking to the, this lender from over, uh, overseas, overseas, wherever they, whatever, whatever country, we are making a change and we are making a difference. Yeah. And, and the, the, the challenge, the biggest challenge, and, and guys, I'll, I'll put it right on a, a podcast. <laughs> One of the reasons that we are get fundable is not because it's just our message. Like every single thing we have talked about for damn near a decade has been about getting fundable. We just didn't have the, the pieces together, right? Yeah. But the concept of credit outside of the institutional reign yeah. has always been black hat. Yep. Hacking, right? It's always been how do we game the system? How do we how do credit we repair. pay credit repair? Yep. Or how do we pay for trade lines? Now there's a valid place for credit repair because guys, there is no one from any bureau will, will ever get on TV and say we don't ever make mistakes. They <laughs> we have used this analogy forever. They cast the widest net they can yep. and they gather all the information. I mean, I've t I've said this before. I have somebody in Illinois whose name is identical to mine, right. whose birth date is a day off of mine, <laughs> and our socials are really close, apparently, because he ends up on my credit report every couple of years. And I have to call him and go, hey, just look back in the history. You'll, you'll see I've already disputed this. That's not me. Now, the cool thing is the guy pays his bills. Thankfully. Right? So <laughs> it doesn't hurt me, but it doesn't help me with my optimized profile either. Right, right. And so I always take care of it when it pops up. But why does that happen? Because they cast a wide net. So mistakes happen. Merged files happen. All, the time. All sorts of stuff happens, All the right? Time. They're not going to dispute that. But it's when we start using credit repair to try to game the system. Like, right. oh, I just, uh, I, you know what? I just applied for five credit cards. How do I get rid of the inquiries? Right. right? Like that, that type of garbage is the stuff that has and given do not, everybody. And we do name. not support and it. We don't support it. But we're thrown in. The, the, the point the you're point making is, is we get thrown in on those exact, uh, in those categories, right? Yep. And we get ascribed with black hat um, influence, right? We're we are guilty before proven innocent. And yes. so we have to prove over and over and continue to prove and continue to re what, reassure, yep. continue to ensure 
um, all of these institutional beings and entities that we are who we are and that we do make borrowers fundable and that when our borrowers show up to their doorstep, they can give them the best rates, the highest loan amounts, and that they are the exact borrower that they want to do business with. Yeah. Every time. PCID. So the point is, is well made, Brad, and you guys have to understand that this is, um, we are literally climbing out of, it's like, I, I can't even think of it. I, I just said the reptiles are, are dissing their amphibian cousins that they just evolved from, right? We are c- completely different, even though my roots, which has gotten us into trouble. Aren't you the guy for, uh, that it was co-founder of Lexington? I'm like, yeah, but that's why I'm doing what I'm doing is because I learned from my experience there that you can't repair your way to fundability. No one's going to give you a $50,000 business line of credit because you deleted a couple negative items, right? You got to have fundable profile. We've spent the last 10 years together. Brad's been with the better part of 10 years doing exactly this and making you guys or making the tools necessary. So do not, do not forget, go to getfundable.com. Check out the, the actual words on this, on this podcast. We turn them all into blogs, right? Send your friends and family to listen to these podcasts so they understand that it doesn't have to be this way. So they can put on their white hat and join our fun, uh, funding hacker community, which is the best way to do that is at the same website, getfundable.com. Click on, check out our boot camp. And the boot camp is where you get your deep dive into what the hell is fundability anyway? And that's where you are, you, you are crowned a funding hacker. So, well, and one of the cool things too is, is what it means to you to be a funding hacker is you have access that other people don't have. Yeah. You get to be <laughs> taught the things that nobody else is teaching. And you get a team of people who are going to lead from the front and who will defend you fiercely. Yeah. Uh, Meryl, I, I can't count the number of times I have, overheard phone calls with Merrill on a call with a lender, with a CPA, with an attorney, where he is explaining what is happening and what we're doing. And the end result in every case is better for our client. It's better for you as funding hackers because we're, we're living it, right? This isn't, we don't, we don't mess around with theory. We're, we're living it. I mean, Merrill's a a hundred and something thousand in approvals in the last quarter. Yes. Right. Just we're, we're doing, we're, we're growing our fundability. We're growing our credit lines. Yeah. We're growing our, our, and when I say, when I say Merrill, I mean business, right? Business the, lines. the business lines. So it, it's, it's one of those things, but we will, we will defend you fiercely and, and we will get on the phone with your lenders and make sure they're doing what, what is right. Because guys, I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> most of the lenders you talk to it, it, loan officers, et cetera, they don't know what's going on either. And the number of times that we've had people tell us, directly oh yeah no 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 that that's not even possible you can't you can't do that we don't have that that's not even a thing we offer and then they come back a day later two days later and go so i asked the question like you asked me to and it turns out we, we do have that we and have we that can product. do that yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it happens and it happens a lot so so we will we'll, we will go to battle with you we'll go to battle for you and we will always be leading from the front so that when merrill finds something new out at fico world you guys get it and you guys get it first. Right. And, yeah. and this is the only place you can get it because yeah. nobody else is going to tell no, you. Nobody else. <laughs> I, I'm still amazed. Right. That, and we have, there's a high barrier of entry to be able to do the math, to build the program that our database encompasses and, and know how to rank a file's contribution to a profile so that we can tell you exactly dates and times to open an account, close an account. Now I'm geeking out. I always do. But the point is, is that there is so much to know, but we get to synthesize. I am the geek who loves being knee deep, neck deep in this stuff. So you don't have to, so that you can say, Meryl, here's my, here's my, uh, here's my problem. This is the, and I need a solution. And our entire boot camp is literally based. We start from the beginning, every single piece of tech we do, we don't just spout off tech. We show you how a, it, 
the, the, the things that you're learning solved a client's problem, solved a student's problem. A real life human being became fundable as the result of implementing these steps or these strategies or these tactics. It's not about just people think the bootcamp is like a sales thing. And other people think it's just a, you know, a, 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 a university platform for credit. What it is, is we got solutions. Let's go down these. Uh, let's go down and use the tech to show how we solve your 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 problems. Well, it, yeah, it, it's like if it, imagine the boot camp being like you you have your your car right now. If it's a it's a, a later model car, you know it's a newer car. You're gonna take it into the shop, and when you take it into the shop, they're gonna say the first thing they're gonna do, unless they know exactly what was wrong with it coming in, they're gonna say let us do some diagnostics on it. And so that's what, that's what we do with all of our clients is we do a diagnostics on their fundability. Right. And then from that, we end up with now, Hey, okay. So here are your options, right? Sometimes it's straightforward. You need these three things and then we're there, right? We're submitting application, but with, with your car, if they come back and they go, Hey, okay, so check it out. It, it, we're getting a, 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 an error on your spark plugs. We're getting an error on your fuel filter, on your air filter. Um, right now, your air filter, you can probably get, get away with for a little bit longer, but the fuel filter is going to be a real problem that you might end up at the side of the road on, uh, on a long, deserted highway that you may not want to be on. And the spark plugs, it's going to really impact your efficiency and, and you know, you know, all the different things that that impacts with the, the operation of the vehicle. What would you like to repair right now? Do you want us to do all of it? Do you want us to do part of it? Uh, and which part do you want us to do? And so then you get to pick. Well, those diagnostics, we, we come in and we create and, and provide the solutions. And it, it's and the and the documents we actually the worksheets we actually do in the boot camp is the diagnostics. Are the diagnostics people yeah. come people come out of there going some are happy some are like holy hell and I have to remind them that these very documents while they may feel discouraging to a couple of you it's actually the path it sh literally is the path to your to solving your funding problems because you cannot know brad always says it you cannot know where you're going until you know where you are right now they're completely different directions depending on where you are so that's what the boot camp is, is designed to do is teach you the fundability principles and then diagnose your particular situation so that you can solve it we can do it with you you can do it on your own whatever it is but you have you at least have now actionable intel as i like to yeah. say yeah now this podcast isn't about the boot camp we like to that message was brought to you by funding hackers are you effable <laughs> get effable too um but it, it really does come down to the the reality of what funding hackers Hacking. means to us yes like it, it's it's about mastering the game and playing at the highest level by the rules that are before us to play with. Yeah. It's not, and, and guys, I'm gonna mention a couple things because I don't know the last time we mentioned them, but there are still, to this day, even post-2008, pre-2008, this, what I'm about to describe was rampant. It was out of control. Post-2008, it's been a little bit less, but it seems like it's ramping back up. I'm starting to hear the, the, the drums beating again a little bit here and there. Like, there are companies out there who are going to tell you, oh, I can fix your credit in 90 days, 30 days, 45 days. Anybody who tells you that is going to, they're lying to you. It's going to cost you a ton of money. And I'm going to tell you how they're doing it, just straight up. They're going to go down to Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. They're going to put some, they're going to have, sit outside and they're going to look at somebody who looks like they're having the worst day of their life. They pulled up in a really crappy car that was smoke was coming out of it. The doors don't <laughs> shut all the way. They've got tape holding up the windows and they're going to go up and they're going to talk to them and go, man, it looks like you're having a bad day. What's happening? And they're going to engage them in a conversation. And all of a sudden at the end of that, or suddenly, for those of you who are, are uh, <laughs> grammar Nazis, um, suddenly <laughs> they are going to, uh, they're going to say, you know what? God, what it, it sounds like a couple of thousand dollars extra a month could maybe help you out. Would that would that would that, would that, would, would that help? Would that help you? Because I I can make that happen for you. Oh yeah, absolutely. A couple, yeah. What are you talking about? Well, I could get you an extra five to ten thousand a month. And who's not going to be intrigued in that conversation? So they go, how does that happen? Well, so what I'm going to need you to do is, I'm going to meet you here, and or at McDonald's, wherever it is, and I'm going to give you the names of some people with their socials. I just need you to go in and just delete any negative stuff on their files, and they're going to go. Ah, that doesn't sound like a great idea. I promised I wouldn't do that. And he's going, I mean, it's an extra thousand bucks per file. What do you get paid to do your job now? And they're like, like 
barely that. Cool. So do you, are you in? And eventually they find somebody who says yes. Now here's the crazy part of this. In the olden days, they could get away with <laughs> when this. I started crying. Yeah, they <laughs> yeah. could get away with this for months and months and months. And P.S. Lexington did not do this. Let me be very clear. That is not what I'm saying. Um, but they could get away with it longer because technology was not where it is today. Now, I'm going to tell you right now how it happens. If somebody goes in and they start seeing unnatural activity in keystrokes of deleting um, trade lines or negative items on, uh, on an individual's account, and that starts happening on multiple accounts, their system, their, their whatever your workstation gets flagged by the, the, by the uh, quality assurance team. They come in, they look at that, and they audit every single thing that got deleted. Uh, that person's going to get fired. And the person Criminal who is, prosecution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's against their, the law and, and their agreements with the company. Um, the person who, was, who engaged them is going to skate scot-free. They're going to just fade off into the sunset and then wait to try to find somebody else later. And it, that, that's and you lost the cycle. Money. And you lose your money. So if you're the first or second one, good luck. Like you might make it through, but it, it's going to happen. And here's the other kicker. With technology now, they can put the deletions back on. Yeah. They, they can. They have that technology. Guys, that's black hat. That's illegal. That's garbage. Yeah, that's black right? hat hacking. Well, and, and also, then, then, then there's the other side of it, right? I got a phone call literally two, three weeks ago, and somebody said, well, do you guys put trade lines on my profile? And I said, no, <laughs> no, we don't put, air quotes, trade lines <laughs> on your profile. You, you apply for trade lines, because a trade line is, is a credit card. It's a loan. It's a car. Yeah. Uh, it's an auto loan. It's a, it's a mortgage. That's a trade line. Anything that shows up on your credit report as an account is a trade line, right? We actually yeah. just talked about that in our boot camp. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, we don't put them on. And, and that has artificially, been artificially, yeah. because that, that has been a strategy in the past. And you can pay me, you know, not me, okay, let me rephrase that. You can pay someone. <laughs> this advertiser brought to you. <laughs> by <laughs> not credit, not funding hackers, not get fundable. Um, you, you could pay somebody, you know, 5,000, 2,000, 3,000, and they would put a trade line on your profile and they'd keep it there for a month or two. You're basically renting someone else's profile. And someone else's financial someone else's repu reputation. reputation. And besides also being illegal it's yeah. fraud just yeah, so we're all it's clear fraud. um it's it's a practice that is again artificial intelligence guys if you have a a history 24 month look back period if you don't know about it look at it check it out it's in one of our podcasts um 24 month look back period if you all of a sudden have a 24 month look back period that that overnight changes <laughs> you don't think that flags a system somewhere all of a sudden they have 30 months <laughs> like, worth of positive yeah. Oh, wait, you bought this house in 1998. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. It wasn't here yesterday. Yeah. So just so you guys know, all of that is fraud. All of that is the, the, the garbage, Ugh, the, just the, the, the crap that has, has caused us to have an uphill battle that Merrill has to continually prove to Will hack, Lansing yeah. that look, we're hack not our way to the, through the jungles of the bullshit. Yeah. He's not, he doesn't have to do it. I, you know, I use it, the language. It is an, it's been an uphill battle, but the evolution is, is that the more and more that, uh, that um, we actually had, we offered um, to probably six different, they were midline um, uh, um, advisors at FICO mid, mid management. And we said, Oh, we have a, we have a podcast. Are you effable? And they laughed their asses off. They were, <laughs> there were three of us. We had like a couple different conversations, but one of them was like, what is that? And I said, are you effable? Are you fundable? And they're like, got a kick out of actually seeing that we're taking this thing on not just like selling multi-million dollar technology out black hat style out the back of our station wagon in a park right we're actually teaching borrowers in public online everywhere teaching borrowers how to create fundable profiles that fit the underwriting that get the yeses but are completely legal and we, they said oh yeah i'm on my way home i want to listen to some i love podcasts i said now just like we told you in the beginning just the first episode, the origin story, it's a little dark, right? DC Comics. If you haven't, go listen to it. First of all, it's Brad and I again, and so uh, it's always uh, it's always entertaining. But 
it, we are, we're not afraid. I'm not afraid of where w- the genesis of this and shared it with these guys to go, to go listen to the podcast so they can start seeing literally what we're truly teaching borrowers, right? Well, and, and we're also not a fa- uh, a f- a fade. We're not afraid of the evolution of it to where we are today and the revolution that we're starting yeah. as get fundable so that you can be a funding hacker so that you can capitalize on all of this and so that you can get, get uh, what, we, what we tell everybody so that you can get the most inexpensive money available to do your deals, to build your business, yeah. to grow whatever it is you're your doing. Finan- accomplish right? your financial goals and dreams, right? That, that's what it's about. So what is, um, what else is a funding hacker? Anything that, uh, besides the j- cutting edge, you know, anything that we have, have missed? Cause I want to make sure that you guys feel comfortable that, you know what, here's, here's what's fascinating part of my personal life. I am not known for coloring inside the lines, but when it comes to what, the instructions we give our clients and, our and by students. coloring inside the lines, he means following the rules. <laughs> yeah. Let's be very clear on what that means. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah, I, but I'm actually just donning, connecting the dots right now. That this is where I want to teach that coloring outside the lines is coloring inside the lines, right? Because everybody else, as Brad just said, on, on uh, and what he just shared is that everybody out there is trying to to black hat this process and so so being the rebel is actually showing how to how to make it work and have have the lender blessing we use the metaphor um, I use it all the time in the boot camp is that this is pro ball we want you to be a first round draft choice we want you to be that five second player that when the heat is on who do they give the ball cuz they know the highest percentage of of they're going to they're going to make the basket right who are you that five second um, player? And we know how to make you that so that they'll, that the lenders want to give you the ball of more and more funding, higher and higher limits, more and more loans, personal business, commercial, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. We want you to be clutch is what that five second player is. Just God. so we're on the same clutch. page. Yes. Be clutch. Um, you know, I, I, I have my list and, and I, I wrote down bullets of what, when you asked me, you know, how do we talk about what a funding hacker is? <laughs> and, and we, we did cover everything right. on my list. But you know what? But the, even the term funny, when it came to us guys, it was like, it just resonated. And when Brad, when Brad was like, Hey, what about, cause we wanted to name the community, right? We, cause we were building this community. We'd already had several boot camps, and we were, and we'd be, we were sharing the boot camps, archiving all that stuff in the uh, boot camp and Brad's like, what about funding hackers? And we're like, yes, period. Because for me, the framework, the filter was already white hat, but funding hackers was, it was like magic. And so our rally, our, 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 our war cry is get fundable, but the tribe, the tribe, the tribe, you, me, Brad, and, and everybody who participates with the podcast, the book, the boot camps, clients, everybody is pushing the, the, your participation in this tribe is really based on you. How, how big do you want to go? How much do you want to know? Ooh, well, actually, actually, right? how big? well, and, and, and for me, the, the, the reason it worked and it resonated so well is because, because I am a funding hacker, right? Yep. We are funding hackers collectively. Everybody who's listening you saw to this shirt, podcast, right? we you saw, are. Yep. Funding hackers. And, yeah. and that, that's real. And that's why it, it resonated because it, it, it's, it's a little edgy, right? Yeah. It, give, it gives you a chance to at least have a conversation and about what the heck does edgy, that mean, so, yeah. right? <laughs> but it also is what Merrill, if every one of your friends is getting a tattoo and you don't get a tattoo, you're the rebel, yeah. right? And, and that's the reality. We are, we are taking this to the, ne- the get fundable revolution to the next level. Yeah. And we want you to master your game. We want you to be a funding hacker with us. We want you to be one of the crazy ones that believes you can make a difference because then you will. Yeah. And that difference is going to be to your loved ones, your family, your, your business, your employees. When you are effable, guys, 
your whole world changes. You know this from all, if you've been binging these, if this is your first one, being effable is the game changer. So we're so glad you were able to join us, uh, to join us today. This is Meryl Chandler, your host of Are You Effable? And guys, being a funding hacker just takes you being effable to the next level, whatever your participation. And we're going to continue to invite you to grow that and grow that and grow that so that you become a master of this entire get fundable uh, technology and the opportunities that come from it. So thank you, Brad, for joining me. Yep. Today. Happy to always be here. Everybody out there, continue uh, next level getting fundable. All right. Peace. Hey, guys. Thank you for listening to Are You Effable? Please leave comments because I would love to read about your aha moments from this episode. And be sure to visit fundinghackers.com to view the blog post, get important links, join our community, and much, much more. And you gotta tell your friends about this podcast. We want them to become effable too.